a pleasure to welcome you to KCSE 2023 Chemistry Paper 2 Question number 4 Question 4 tested on a topic in Form 4 called Energy Changes in Physical and Chemical Processes what we usually refer to as thermochemistry. Part A of question 4, however, tested on heating curves which are discussed in Form 1. Welcome and stay on till the end. Figure 3 shows how the temperature of lead changes as it is heated. So we have temperature on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. From Form 1 knowledge, we know that between region A and B, our lead is in solid state. Between region B and C, the solid is melting. So temperature remains constant as indicated by the horizontal nature of line segment BC. Between C and D, lead is in molten or liquid state. Then we have a similar situation to region BC being witnessed in DE. Here, we are evaporating liquid lead. And finally, between E and F, we have the gaseous form of our substance. Let's now look at the questions that were asked about the curve. Part A, Roman 1, we were asked to label on the diagram the states present on regions C, D, and E, F for one mark each. So we now refer back to our diagram to answer the questions. As agreed in our previous discussion, the state of lead between region C, D, we agreed is liquid. A candidate would go for molten state as well. This for one mark. When it comes to region EF, the state is either vapor or a candidate would go for gas and even gaseous would score for the state of lead between region E and F. We proceed to Roman 2 of part A. In Roman 2 of part A, we were asked to explain why temperature remains constant. And this we were able to see in our diagram quite well. Temperature remained constant between region BC and DE. So the examiner now asked us to give reasons as to why that is so. We begin with region BC and here what makes the temperature to be constant is that the energy absorbed by the substance, the energy absorbed by the substance is diverted, it is used or rather diverted to convert the solid into liquid. Of course, this happens at constant temperature. So this is the reason why we don't have any temperature rise between region B and C. Of course, there is conversion of the solid into liquid for that one mark. When it comes to region DE, we have the reason why temperature remaining constant as that the energy absorbed here as well 
is now used to convert. We are now converting the liquid into gas. And of course, this also happens at constant temperature. We have this giving ourselves another one mark. That does it for the part of question four that tested on the heating curve that is learned at form one. We now proceed to part B, which now came from form four syllabus. Figure four shows an energy cycle diagram for processes involved in potassium bromide. So we have the solid potassium bromide. If we follow delta H2, we realize that the solid is ionized, of course, in gaseous form. Then if we follow delta H3, the gas that we have obtained here, the ions in gaseous form, are being surrounded by water molecules to give the aqueous form of our substance. So, going back to what we discussed in class, a candidate would have realized that delta H2 is actually lattice energy. Delta H3 is the heat change involved when water molecules surround a substance in gaseous form. We call it hydration energy. And delta H1 now becomes the summation of the two and we call it the heat or the enthalpy of solution. Having had a discussion about the diagram, let's now have a look at the questions that were tested about the cell. Part 1, we were asked to name the enthalpy changes represented by delta H1, 2, and 3. As agreed earlier, delta H1 becomes our enthalpy of solution. For one mark, delta H2, we've also agreed, is our lattice energy. Again, one mark and delta H3 was our hydration energy. For the next mark, now for Roman 2, we were asked to write an expression showing how delta H3 can be obtained from delta H1 and delta H2. Now, candidates, you realized that in class, we've always told you that enthalpy of solution, that is delta H1, is normally given by the summation of lattice energy, delta H2, added to the hydration energy, delta H3. So this question is asking us to show how delta H3 can be obtained from the other two. And those of us who are mathematicians, we know if quotes make delta H3 the subject of the formula, we shall have delta H3 as being given by delta H1 minus delta H2. For that mark, we now proceed to the last question, part C, which tested on bond energies. Using the thermochemical data given in table 4, table 4 is here, we were asked to calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction where BF3 in gaseous form is more or less decomposed to give B in gaseous form and 3 moles of F again in gaseous form. So if we look at table 4, we have the energy involved in the conversion of B from solid to gas as positive 590 kilojoules per mole. The second one here shows that 
B in solid form would react with the 3 over 2 moles of F2 gas to give 1 mole of BF3 gas. The heat involved here is negative 1111 kilojoules per mole. We are finally given F2 gas being converted to 2 moles of F gas and the heat involved is 158 kilojoules per mole. So using this uh, information here, we were to calculate the enthalpy change for this equation here. Now if you look at this keenly, we are like decomposing BF3 to give 1 mole of B and 3 moles of F. Now to get the energy used for BF3 to decompose it, we will be forced to look at the second process here. And second process means that we are forming one mole of BF3 and the energy involved is negative 111. Now, this equation means we are not forming BF3 but more or less we are decomposing it. So the amount of heat involved in decomposing it would actually mean that we are reversing this equation. And for that reason, the amount of heat energy involved here would have been the reverse of this. So we shall take it as positive 1111 kilojoules. Getting this would earn the candidate the first mark that is reversing whatever is happening in process 2. Now, to our products now. We are getting B gas from B solid and we are using process 1. The heat energy involved here, we've been given as positive 590 kilojoules. This one was more or less coping from the table, so we did not award any mark for it. Let's look at the second product, 3F. So if you look at process 3, we are forming 2 moles of F, but here we have 3 moles. So to calculate the amount of heat energy that is involved here, a candidate would expect it to use the relation that if 2 moles of F are accompanied by positive 158 kilojoules of energy, what about 3 moles? So doing a quick cross multiplication, we would have 3 multiplied by 158 divided by 2. And that would give 237 kilojoules of energy. Now, to get now the overall heat change, which is delta H for the reaction, we would simply add the three values that we've calculated up there. So we have positive 1111 we would add it to 590 which is here and then we finally add it to 237 this would give a total of positive 1938 of course kilojoules per mole that's the final answer it was marked out of two so we already earned ourselves half here the next half would come from the calculation of how much energy would be involved in formation of 3 moles of F. Then the addition here, another half, and final answer half, of course, together with the units. With that, we've come to the end of this short video where we have reviewed question 4 as tested in 2023 KCSE Chemistry Paper 2. Thank you for your time and as always keep it the Kenyan teacher for more of such insightful reviews.